Uh, this year, the HIV and AIDS community has been greatly challenged by the shift in focus to appropriately responding to the coronavirus pandemic. As the world marks the World AIDS Day, experts believe the pandemic has brought to light the need to ensure continuity in services and the urgent need to reinforce strategies towards ending HIV and AIDS epidemic across the globe. TVC News correspondent Kimi Balogun reports. The World AIDS Day brings an opportunity for people worldwide to unite in the fight against HIV, to show support for people living with the disease, and to also remember those who have died from AIDS-related illnesses. Lucy Enya is a HIV and AIDS advocate who runs a support system and a center for women and children living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria. Living with AIDS herself, she has used her advocacy to push for more care and support for women and children living with the disease. The stress that this COVID-19 has brought in the life of people living with HIV and AIDS is terrible. Because up to now, businesses are not functioning well. The little one you had you were managing, selling and all of that, you cannot keep them again because you have finished your small money you had during the lockdown. People that were supposed to be coming here now for training, they can't be able to do that because supporting them for transportation is also a problem. Since the emergence of COVID-19, there has been little or no HIV response to communities or NGOs like hers, which caters for about 30 women. Donor funders have also greatly reduced, leaving those vulnerable in dire need of the right supply of antiretroviral therapy in distress. We also have uh, some particular treatment that we take, which is uh, Zedovidine. It's not available again in the hospitals. Because the program is not working well. How are we going to get the issue of uh, U equals to U, undetectable, equals to untransmittable, when the drugs are not taken accordingly? <laughs> The National Agency for the Control of AIDS, which is Nigeria's leading agency in the fight to end the HIV epidemic, says strong collaborations and partnerships are the only way to make a difference. Together, uh, we will fight, and together, we will be out in the community to fight stigma and discrimination, to make sure that people have the courage and confidence to get tested for HIV. For it is only when people agree to get tested that our dream of getting to 90, 90, 90, and 95, 95, 95 will be realized. As Nigeria continues to battle with the COVID-19 pandemic, the UN Joint Team on AIDS, along with partners including communities, are working to ensure steps needed to combat COVID-19 while also delivering essential HIV testing, prevention, and treatment services in both traditional and novel ways are maintained. A message by the UNAIDS Executive Director, Winnie Bianyima, says that COVID-19 is strengthening the progress that the world has made in health and development over the past 20 years, including the gains that have been made against HIV. And like all epidemics, it is widening the inequalities that already exist. Available data shows that from 2010 to 2019, Nigeria has only reduced 10% of HIV new infections where youth, women and children are infected every single day. So there is an urgent need to build on community-level HIV testing programs, awareness creation and sensitization in order to achieve epidemic control by the year 2030. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja. Well, on that note, we move to our first discussion on HIV and AIDS. Today is World AIDS Day, and joining me now is Dr. Emil Okun, the Secretary NMA in Lagos. She's a public health physician with a bias for infectious diseases, especially HIV and tuberculosis. Thank you very much for joining us at Good this point. morning. So you watched that report. Now tell us how the spread of uh, the advent of COVID-19 has hampered uh, the treatment, the target of the, the UN uh, as, as regards um, HIV and AIDS. Okay, thank you for having me. So um, this um, year, the theme for World AIDS Day, which started the first time in 1988, so about 32 years now, of um, reckoning with people living with HIV AIDS and using the opportunity to create awareness, the mm -hmm. theme this year is global responsibility 
and uh, global solidarity, shared responsibility. So in other words, while we are trying to do some kind of division of labor, remember that there is unity of purpose, especially at these trying times of COVID-19, which has disrupted not only HIV services, but other health, um, health system um, things. So immunization, malaria, mm -hmm. and other things have been- Other infectious ad diseases as well. They've been affected yeah. adversely. So um, there are efforts to now bring us back because we we initially had the lockdown, then relaxation of lockdown. Now everybody is trying to bring back um, services because we already had gaps. We had unmet needs. Mm. For instance, in Nigeria, as at um, 2019, before the, um, on the outbreak of COVID-19, we had like 1.9 million infections and people living with HIV AIDS. And we were barely meeting the needs of about maybe 55% of them. Wow. So by the time we now had COVID-19, there was lockdown. People were not able to go to the facilities. People were not having um, ec economic, there was economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And like they just mentioned in the reports now, some people couldn't access health services services, transportation became a problem and yeah. challenge for some people. So that further made it worse in the statistics mm. of unmet needs, especially with respect to people living with HIV and AIDS. Yeah, it, it, it made things worse, of course. But how uh, is Nigeria trying to mitigate all of these factors? OK, so we have um, um, the response is led by NACA, the National Agency for Control of AIDS, and we have the state agencies too with mm -hmm. our partners. So everybody is coming together to see how resources can be rechanneled okay. towards bridging the gaps. So we have several partners coming on board. Um, there are quite a lot of them. I don't mm. want to mention names, but then coordinating at the center is the National Agency for Control of AIDS. And we have that um, in Lagos Street, Lagos State AIDS um, Control Agency. So, okay, so um, recently, the country representative of the Joint UN Program on HIV and AIDS, Dr. Erasmus Mora, said there were no fewer than 1.6 million Nigerians died of HIV and AIDS since the outbreak in 1985. So far, from then till now, has there been any progress made in the fight against this disease? Sure. There has been a lot of progress that has been made. Initially, when we were treating, for instance, OK, we, ha we have partners supporting us, donating drugs, equipments for testing, and other things like that. So um, when we had drugs available, initially we were treating people with what we call CD4. That's what shows the level of um, immunity mm -hmm. in the system. So initially we were treating with people with CD4 less than 200. Okay. Then we have moved on to test and treat. So immediately you're HIV positive. We don't have to wait until your CD4 doing those. We start treatment immediately. And we have gone through some levels of um, drug regimens that now we now use a um, dolotegravir based regimen, which is very, we found it very effective and is causing a great level of uh, viral suppression, which is the whole aim. Like they mentioned in the series you just showed, U equals to U. Yeah. That is the goal. So undetectable viral load, untransmissible infection, that is what we are all aiming at. And we've made a lot of progress in that regard. Yeah. So as, as regards testing and treatment, we have done so well. We are doing very well. Mm. We have. Okay, so has there been a, in, in testing and treatment services, since right now the, the, the lockdown has been relaxed, have there been a rebound? Rebound of services or rebound testing and of treatment services of HIV and AIDS patients. Yeah, we are treat, we are testing more now because now services are opening and people are coming to the hospitals more. You know, because initially when we were just reopening, we had to stagger appointments. You can't take everybody at once because of the physical distancing and all that. Mm -hmm. But now we are taking more, so we are of course testing more. Okay, so let's look at the issue of. Um, funding for research on HIV and AIDS is, as a country, are we doing well in that aspect? Yeah, we are. Though there's that um, challenge with um, funding for research, but then, you know, remember, we have Nigerian Institute of uh, Medical Research, and they're doing a whole lot in that regard. Mm. Uh, there's funding, but we could do better. Okay, so uh, do you think that um, healthcare facilities have done enough to protect people living with HIV and AIDS, especially with this pandemic? They have. They're working very hard and to rebound services okay. to make sure 
we are able to meet those, that percentage that had unmet needs mm. for services for HIV AIDS. Um, everything is coming back now. So it's getting better. Everything is coming back. There are more people mm -hmm. going for testing. More people are coming. What about out the for issue testing? of stigma? Um, the stigma thing is still there, but it's a whole lot improved now. Now that people now know the means, modes of transmission of HIV, you know it's not gotten by just touching people mm -hmm. or sharing cups and spoons and all that. So the stigma is reducing. It is. When you say reducing, how is it reducing? Well, I might not be able to put a percentage because to that. When you, say, when you say it's reducing, some people might disagree. Okay. Um, stigma in workplaces, okay. for instance, we still have a challenge with, you know, when people want to get employment and you go do some, um, do testing and uh, maybe you're not told that HIV is included in the test mm. and somebody now gives your employer the, or proposed the employer the results mm -hmm. and um, all of a sudden you just find out that what was looking more like you are going to get employed maybe because the person tested positive to HIV and persons so those discrimination we're okay. still working hard to to get that especially in workplaces okay what, 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 what are you actually doing to ensure that that is reduced what measures have been put in place so we have um, stakeholders uh, the business groups they have a business coalition against HIV AIDS and mm -hmm. things like that. So these are like the stakeholders that the Ministry and the Agency for Control of AIDS have been working with to speak with them and explain the nitty gritty of this stigma and discrimination that is totally not necessary, it's totally unnecessary to discriminate against these people, especially since we know the means of um, transmission. As long as the kind of work you're doing mm -hmm. is not going to expose the people you're working with to the risk, then there's no need for you to discriminate. Okay, so new data, new data is showing that um, an estimated 26.0 million people were on antiretroviral treatment as of mid-2020, up only 2.4% from, from an estimated 25.4 million at the end of 2019. Some people believe that um, this is slow by comparison to last year, where treatment coverage increased by an estimated 4.8% between January and June 2019. What do you think? It is slow, and um, it may not be unconnected with the pandemic and all what has happened. 2020 has been a wonderful year. I would rather want to use that word, wonderful, but uh, we're going to get by. And um, thank God, last month of 2020, we're working very hard to make sure that all that um, we have lost in mm -hmm. the process of the COVID pandemic, we are able to bring up to speed. Okay, so how are we as, as a nation... Um, accommodating those who do not want to go for HIV and AIDS tests or who feel ashamed to go to the hospitals for testing? Wow, that's, um, that's quite a handful because um, what we just do is try to create awareness more and try to convince people that even if you test positive, mm. it's not a death sentence. People keep confusing HIV with AIDS. Mm -hmm. AIDS is the end stage of the disease. People live with HIV AIDS and go about their normal businesses. And if they don't tell you, you may not know they, they have. So that is what we try to encourage people or tell them. That is the message we try to bring out so that people will be encouraged to go out and do the testing. Because, of course, we are adults. You can't force people. Mm -hmm. Best you could do is to just convince. So we try to give them adequate information so that they can make informed and right choices when it comes to going out and uh, making themselves available for this test. Okay, talking about enlightenment now, in a place like Lagos, how would you rate the level of enlightenment? Lagos is trying. Lagos is really doing well. In fact, setting, setting standard for uh, many other places. They are really doing very well. Public enlightenment, media, community, town hall meetings and all that. Lagos is doing a whole lot, especially in this area. Mm. Okay, so looking at um, the new targets for the WHO by, of ending AIDS as a public health threat by 2030, is um, their hope that some of the innovative approaches adopted during COVID-19 can help the world catch up and accelerate progress towards this new target? Of course, we can. We're talking about 10 years to come. Even though we've had a little setback in this 2020, but with the, um, and we engineered a new efforts and these strategies, I'm sure we can. 
So we're working very hard towards it. And what, new efforts have been, what new efforts have been put in place? Okay, like I just mentioned in the area of the drug treatment, the kind of um, decentralization of treatment, mm. then making it a lot easier for people to pick up their drugs. So like people, if you have viral, if you're, if you're virally suppressed and you do not have any fresh complaints, mm. what we try to do is give dispensation of drugs for like three months, six months. We call it... Um, multi mult um, scripting okay. and there's so many other strategies like that, that community pharmacy mm -hmm. so that for people that cannot um, find um, their way to the hospitals they can go to nearby community pharmacies to pick up their drugs there are quite a lot of innovative strategies mm -hmm. that uh, are on board to make it easier for us to be able to achieve the un targets uh, finally now so as we celebrate or we mark the world aids day what will be your message to nigerians on this day Okay, so my message to Nigerians would be HIV is a virus and um, pandemic, we've been talking about COVID-19 pandemic. This is a pandemic too mm -hmm. and it has to be controlled. Uh, we should reduce the stigma and um, discrimination. It is not a death sentence, so everybody should feel free. Go and know your status. Test as frequently as possible. It's not a one-off thing. Mm -hmm. If you test today and you test negative, take all the preventive measures. In about three to six months, keep testing okay. and stay healthy. Okay. Thank you very much. Keep testing and stay healthy. Thank you very much for talking to us on this day. Thank you so much.